AES coverage sponsored by GoDaddy.com, the leader in domain names, web hosting services, new customers save 25% by using promo code CES25 at GoDaddy.com. Hi, this is Andy McCaskey for SGR News and RV News Net for the Tech Podcast Network. We're here at CES 2011. I'm with Kevin. We are in the Zigbee tech zone. The, the motto for Zigbee is control your world. Many people think about energy when it first comes up, but that's not the whole story. Yeah, Zigbee is, is about wireless sensor networks that you can use in many different applications, and energy is being one of our uh, most successful areas right now. Um, and what, we, what we've got with energy is a lot of, um, a lot of utility companies are, are working on the smart grid, and they're implementing new smart meters into uh, different homes around, around the U.S., and actually around the world. And uh, what, what they're doing is they're putting uh, new smart meters on the sides of people's houses here. And then um, those smart meters give you more instantaneous information about your energy use and give you more options to be able to control that en energy use. Yeah. But there's a lot of devices throughout the home that would consume that energy. So I guess this is where individual Zigbee uh, uh, sensors would come in. Right, well, and what you do in, in, in many of those cases is that we, there are a variety of, of ways to do that with uh, smart plugs. Plugs that have the ability to remotely turn off and on based on consumption or based on your, your, based on your own preferences of what's important to turn off and on. Or let's say you walk out of the house and you go, did I turn that off? Oh, I, just, I can just check in online and turn it off. Right. So. Well, now, uh, the, the sensor is gathering the information, but my understanding is it's a very short range um, uh, device as far as transmitting it uh, to, the, to the smart meter. Well, you know, a lot of a lot of the range of Zigbee depends on how many things are in the way. For example, so in a home, it, it's typically it's not a problem in the typical Western home, you know, uh, because it, it goes the the two point four gigahertz uh, s signal is made to go through walls and things like that that we have in the U.S. very easily. So um, the range is really it, it, it is ideal for for the U.S. home, and it works also. I mean, it's in use in Europe too today. It's also so it's not it's it's really it depends on what types of, you know, if you're steel walls and a lot of cement, that makes that create that creates a little bit of a, of, a, of a challenge sometimes. But there are ways around it because the nice thing about Zigbee is it's a mesh network. So the more devices you add in, the more ways it is to round right. to right. build up your network anyway. So it's not necessarily one device to another. It could be five devices that get something around the corner. Yeah. So are how are these powered? How are these devices uh, powered? Well, a lot of the devices can be powered just, you know, if you're plugging into an existing into an existing uh, AC outlet, or you can use batteries. It just depends on how where where you're gonna where you're gonna place the, the where you're gonna place the device itself. Yeah, the uh, but it's a very a very low duty cycle in that there's a, there's a tremendous shelf life for these batteries, right? Right. So, so the the premise behind Zigbee was to keep the energy use very low, and try to attain shelf life levels of of the video qual. I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> he walked right by the video. To try and obtain shelf life energy use for the batteries themselves. So something could last for several years, for example, because it, the devices are made to sleep and not use a lot of power during those times. Right, right. And uh, there seem to be several standards that are competing uh, in, in, the, in this space. Um, Zigbee seems to be the largest, though. Yeah, Zigbee has been working on this for a number of years. Um, we, we were working with the utilities several years ago before the smart grid really became a more a common, uh, and, and, that, and that, un, that background and understanding has really helped us get to the forefront here. Uh, and especially when you look at Zigbee, again, being very energy efficient, you don't want to add more burden onto the load already. So what you want to do is use the most efficient things that you can do and also be able to, to communicate to those devices with the strength of the mesh. Yeah. What's been the biggest, uh, the, the hardest thing for to, to move Zigbee forward? What, what's been the, the biggest uh, obstacle? I, would, I, I don't, wouldn't say that there's one particular obstacle. I mean, this is something new, so everybody's taking a very cautious approach to it, and that's good because we need to do that. Um, and it takes a lot of testing, and when you're working with um, you know, utilities and, and we're working with the government to make sure it's an adopted standard. There's all these different vetting processes that we have to right. go through. Right. So it's getting through those processes and, and we're getting through them, so it's coming. Yeah. 
So, Kevin, if uh, people were interested in learning more about uh, Zigbee, the technology, and all the application areas, where would be a good place for them to go? Uh, our website, zigbee.org. Zigbee.org. Very flexible technology that uh, we're going to be seeing a lot more of. I'm Andy McCaskey with uh, SDR News for the Tech Podcast Network.